dia. Good morning. Welcome. It's great to see you here this morning. Let me read to you Psalms 9, verses 1 and 2. I will praise you, O Lord, with all of my heart. I will tell you of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you, and I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. We're here to praise the Lord this morning. Dale Zaboom, God is good, isn't he? And we want to celebrate and rejoice. Let's pray and invite God's presence here today. Father God, we invite you into this place as we come. Lord, we've come seeking you. And we pray, oh God, that your precious Holy Spirit would fill this place, would challenge our hearts, Lord. And as we sing now and worship, May you be glorified and lifted up in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we invite you to stand. Let's worship the Lord together. Death has 
share just a few announcements with you and actually uh, I'll do it this way we're going to have a quiz okay um, and uh, see um, how you do what is happening this coming Saturday very good all the ladies know the men's <laughs> breakfast right the men's breakfast at 9 a.m. and we want you to be a part of that. Uh, men, if you would let us know so that we make sure we have enough food. But that's downstairs here at 9 a.m. And uh, we want all the men to join us to come. But uh, if you would let Ray or myself know, uh, if you haven't already, we would appreciate that. And then what, what is the date of Lent? When does Lent start? The 22nd. All right. We have two people that are on the ball. <laughs> February 22nd. And I emphasize that because it's early this year. It's in, it starts early the season 
of Lent. But February 22nd, that Wednesday, is the start of Lent. Um, what do you need to get to be a part of our church study during Lent? You need a devotional book. Very good. Wow, you're on top of it here, right? You need this devotional book, right? And you can see Raquel. Uh, the cost is $8, but it's a daily devotions through the Lent season. And uh, it, will take, be a, it will match the sermons that I preach on Sunday. And then also, um, we are having, uh, during Lent, um, we will be having our small group discussion about the topic um, here on Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. Um, doesn't start till Lent starts, so don't show up tonight. There won't be anybody here. Um, but it will start um, the uh, 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 25th, 26th, I believe, right, is the, uh, that Sunday. 20, 22nd is Lent, right, Wednesday, but 26th is the Sunday that the small group study will start at 6 p.m., uh, over in uh, the chapel there. So come be a part of that. When are we taking our alabaster offering? There you go. Yes, you got it. If you don't know, some of you, I know we're getting less and less people answering now, but uh, right? It is in your bulletin there, but uh, you know that uh, it's a tradition in the Church of the Nazarene that we collect our our change over uh, the weeks, and uh, we take an alabaster offering twice a year, and we send that over to uh, the mission field to uh, build churches and hospitals and schools and to, um, to help out uh, there. So be a part of that um, on February 26th as we share together. And then, why is there a bin out in the lobby? What is that all about? Yes, the food pantry. Yeah, the bin is there, and also on Tuesdays, over at our sister church here in, in uh, Newman, uh, the, uh, they give out the food, and they need help, volunteers. So you can see Leisha as a part of that, and uh, be a part of all that's taking place. So you're on the ball. You're okay, right? <laughs> Not too bad. Now, did you bring money to give to the Lord this morning? Because it's our offering time. We'll ask our ushers to come forward. And as we receive our morning offering, and let's pray together. Father God, it is our privilege to give to you. Here's our gifts, Lord. We offer them up in worship and in praise. Thank you, Father, for blessing our lives Touch and use this to touch others, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
please stand for the doxology? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. saw about women's ministries. So I'm talking mostly to women right now, but um, you can all chime in because you all know women that maybe not, won't be here and then you can invite them. Uh, but women's ministries, and I'm gonna read you, um, I think the slide maybe, or the movie might have been a little bit small to read. Um, so let me read you, um, the women's ministries have a statement of mission or purpose or whatever you call it. Um, the women's ministries of the Bethany Church of the Nazarene exist to equip and encourage women to strengthen their relationship with God, build strong bonds with each other, and demonstrate compassion to other women in need. And we will fulfill this by meeting needs of women in the following areas. So one is physically, which is we're going to be making meals to bring to people in need um, and people who are shut in. And Lottie Ferreira and Nish um, Santos, would you two mind standing up for a minute? Come on. So you two ladies, so if you would like to get involved in cooking meals for people, please see one of them. Um, so this is not something that the people that I read out their names are going to be doing. This is going to be what they're going to be leading, and then you're going to be volunteering for, hopefully. And um, they would like to have a food distribution on March 4th. So I think they're going to have you cook food on your own at home and bring it in. And um, so you can talk to them about that, and they can give you more details, especially if I got any of that wrong. Um, another way that we'll be fulfilling the needs of women will be mentally, and that's through encouragement via notes and cards, calls, texts, and visits. And so, Leisha, would you mind standing? And Sarah, are you? There you are. Sarah and Leisha are going to be heading that up. And um, they don't want to write all the notes themselves. They don't want to make all the phone calls and send out all the texts and do all the visiting. They need other women to help. So they're going to have their first visitation day on Monday, February 20th. And if you can go, that's great. But if you can't, please see them anyways if you'd like to participate in that because you can go visit somebody on another day. <laughs> And you can still write notes and make phone calls and that kind of thing. Um, the other way we're going to be ministering to um, the needs of women is socially. Um, at least once a quarter, we're going to be having a, some kind of get-together activity, fellowship type of thing. Um, and those three people that are in charge of that are not here today. One is sick, one's in Florida, and the other one's um, hurt her leg. So that's Christine Tartaglia, Jeannie Gomes, and Linda Fortin. If you would like to have some input in what kind of activities as women that we'd like to do, please talk to one of the three of them. And then uh, and stay tuned for details about what that's going to be, but, but we will be having something soon. And then... Um, the other way that we're going to fulfill the needs of women is spiritually, and so that will be through devotions, through prayer, and through um, discipleship. And I'm going to start leading that with a devotional at my house, and the first one will be at February 28th at 7 o'clock, and that's a Tuesday evening. And then we'll be doing this once a month, and we'd like to rotate where we host it, and and if somebody else is interested in leading a Bible study or a devotional, that would be great as well. And then um, sometime in March, we're going to um, also be doing some kind of um, uh, social, uh, something on social media, like on Facebook Messenger or something like that, uh, like a, um, a conversation Bible study type of thing. If you're not able to come out to physically to a Bible study, then you'll be able to go on your computer and participate at your own time frame. For something like that so women please get involved please get other women involved we'd like to make this completely multi-generational and we'd like to have a lot of fun thank you well please stand with us once again
Amado e compassivo Deus, nosso Pai e também nosso Senhor e Salvador, obrigado pelas Tuas misericórdias que se renovam todas as manhãs. Um Deus que conhece os nossos pensamentos, nossos passos, mesmo antes de haver uma palavra na nossa boca, a Bíblia diz que Deus tudo sabe de nós. E hoje, Senhor, nos regozijamos na Tua presença, pela Tua bondade. Tu conheces o nosso nome, 
Conheces o nosso endereço, conheces as nossas necessidades, conheces as nossas fraquezas. Por isso, nesta hora, com louvor que chegamos aos teus pés, rogando que desces, Senhor, até onde cada um de nós está, para falar conosco, para nos abençoar, para nos transformar e também para nos usar para a bênção de outras pessoas. Senhor, lembrar-nos daqueles que estão enlutados hoje, pedindo conforto para os seus corações. Lembrar-nos daqueles que estão em casa doentes, ou nos hospitais, ou nos lares, pedindo que a Tua presença seja tão real, ou mais real do que nunca, na vida de cada uma delas. Abençoa o Teu povo, a nossa igreja, os nossos pastores, os nossos líderes, em nos vários departamentos da igreja, Abençoe o nosso grupo de louvor, os nossos professores de escola medical. Senhor, visita-nos, porque estamos a precisar de uma visitação poderosa. Não tornarás a revivificar o teu povo. Pedimos que isto aconteça para a glória do teu nome. Father, we are grateful because you know not only our every thought, but you also know our address. Our phone number, you know our needs, and you are willing and able to meet each and every one of them. Thank you this morning for a place called Church, the House of Prayer. Thank you for the privilege of coming to the throne of grace. We, Lord, thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, your grace that is renewed every morning. And Lord, once again, we pray that you may renew your grace and mercy for each one of us. For those who are mourning, we pray for your comfort, the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Those who are shut in, those who are sick, those who are in the hospital or in their homes or nursing homes, we pray for your presence and goodness. Lord, we pray that this morning as we come to listen to the word of God, that we may hear not only the voice of our pastor, but we may hear the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking clearly to each one of us. We pray that you may continue to bless Bethany Church. Lord, it's good to be here. We feel comfortable. But I pray that we may not be so comfortable that we not become concerned about those who are still lost. I pray that you may fill our hearts with love for the lost and we may be able to go out and force them to come in as your word says. Come and bless not only this church, but our district, our district leaders, the churches, the pastors. Oh Lord, visit us and revive us again. We pray in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I believe, um, it wasn't said earlier, but if the children are still here, they need to go downstairs. Um, they'll probably enjoy that more than me. Uh, <laughs> no adults now, just the children. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And Well, we're on a different way to live, right? First Peter, chapter 5. And life is filled with things that we cannot explain, right? For example, if you throw a cat out a car window, does it become kitty litter? <laughs> Can't explain it. Is it okay to use AM radio after noon? 
What do you call a male ladybug? Why doesn't glue stick to the inside of the bottle? Right? If 7-Eleven is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, why does it have do locks on the doors? If you know that the indestructible black box is used on airplanes, right? So it's indestructible. Why don't they make the whole plane out of that stuff? <laughs> if they squeeze olives to get olive oil, how do you get baby oil? <laughs> we won't go there, right? If you're driving at the speed of light and you turn your headlights on, what happens? Right? Do you pass your headlights? If flying is so safe, why do they call airports terminals? <laughs> right? Why is it that when you transport something by a car, it's called a shipment? But when you transport something by a ship, it's called cargo. And why are, all, are, why are they called apartments when they're all stuck together, right? <laughs> One after each other. Simple things we can't explain. Now, these are obviously humorous things we can't explain, but the church that Peter was writing to was trying to understand something not so funny. They're, they were trying to understand the persecution that they were going through. Why were they facing great opposition? They were just trying to live for Jesus Christ, and it felt like the whole world was against them. It felt like everybody was against them. Today we come to the final chapter in 1 Peter, right? chapter 5. And over the past few weeks, we've seen that Peter, his encouragement and his challenge to the church is to remain steadfast in spite of the opposition. In spite of the opposition. Right? To remain steadfast and true. We have acknowledged that the Christians are aliens, right? Strangers in this world. Yet we're not to do things the world's way. We're to live different. We're to live different different and impact our world. Peter knew the world was watching those Christians' lives, watching his life, watching our lives, desiring to see how we respond to adversity. And regardless of the situation, they were expected to live in a way that revealed the transformation they had received through Jesus Christ, and we as well. Do people see a difference in you? Because we too face challenges and struggles in life. We too face pressures to conform, to blend in, even hide Christ. <coughs> so Peter's challenge to live different uh, Showing the world Jesus is also for us today. How can our lives reflect Christ to our world in the middle of such opposition? As he concludes in chapter 5 here, Peter sums up what our response should be. Peter sums up what our response should be. It, it's like any letter, any speech, anything that, that people do, they usually at the very end say, okay, here it is in a nutshell, right? And that's what Peter is doing for us this morning. Chapter 5, I'm going to look at verse 6. Chapter 5 and verse 6, he says this, Humble yourselves under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 
Be alert and sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. And God, and the God of grace, excuse me, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. So, what is this challenge as Peter concludes First Peter, what is the challenge that he gives us? Now what? How do we go from this letter that he has written? Well, the first thing that Peter emphasizes is this. We need to submit to God's way. We need to submit to God's way. He says, humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that, that he may exalt you in due time or lift you up in due time. You know, sometimes the problem that we're facing isn't because of God. It's because we're in the way of God. We need to submit to his way. This is a continuation, basically, of the previous verse. Believers must humble themselves in order to submit to God, right? So that we recognize in a world of humanism that, you know what, my way is not the good way. It's God's way. Submitting fully to him to overcome what we face in this world. We must realize our dependence upon the Lord. He is God. We're not, right? I'm sorry to break the news to you, right? We're not God. And so... His way is better. He is God and we're not. We may not understand God's way, but it always is the best for our lives. It always is the best. This is another influence of the world on us. We think we know best. We think we have all the answers, right? Ever been in a place where somebody asks you for help? A number, number, number of times been in that place, and, and somebody says to me, oh, I don't, I, you know, I'm not really good at all with technology. Would you come and help or figure this out? And I go, and every step of the way, they begin to say, no, you don't want to do that. You want to do this. I thought you didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> right. But isn't that what we do to God? God, come help me. But here's the way I want you to do it, God. Oh, God, you can't make that turn, right? It's humbling ourselves before the Lord. We're promised in due time he will lift us up according to his plan. It's when we arrogantly insist on our plan, our timing, that we become discouraged, right? When we want to quit. So maybe it isn't that, oh, God, you're just not doing it. It's, God, you're not doing it my way. And that gets a little discouraging. But we need to recognize he has it all under control. So get out of his way and let him work. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. But God, you're, you're doing it that way? Yeah, my ways are higher than your ways. I, I can't imagine, God. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Remember, the church Peter was writing to was suffering greatly in their faith. 
They were being marginalized in society. Suppressed. And the world had little, if any, use for those believers. That sound a little familiar today? The world has little use for believers. God knows right where you are, what you're going through, and in his time, his plan, his provisions, he will help. Trust God. Submit to his way. Do you believe everything God's promised in his word? Do you believe God is able? Then submit to his way. Well, number two, Peter challenges us, place it all on God's shoulders. Place it all on God's shoulders. He says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And I, I love the wording of the, the Amplified Bible here. It says, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him. For he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. Give it all to God. Everything. But I want you to notice something here. Peter does not say, bring your anxiety to the Lord. Right? In fact, we, we even say that oftentimes. Oh, just bring it to God. Now, it isn't that God doesn't want it. He does want it. He invites us. He says, cast all your anxiety on him. But he doesn't say, share your anxiety with God. He uses the word cast, right? Now, to cast means to throw something. It means that you get rid of something, right? It means, whoo. With force, right? Why is that important? It's important for several reasons, right? Because when I share something with God, I still grab onto it, don't I? I'm sharing it with God as I'm holding on to it, right? So it doesn't say share your anxiety with God because... We're still in the same place, right? Doesn't even say give it to God. Why? Because we usually grab it back, don't we? Here, God. Here, God, until things get really bad, then I'm going to take it back. And, right? right? So he tells us to cast our anxieties, our cares, our worries on him. Cast means to throw. Hey, Rick, let's see. I'm going to throw you this ball, okay? Now, see, if I hand him this ball, I can take it back because it's very important to me because it is a, it's a Patriots, uh, you know, ball. So notice I'm not throwing it to my sister in the back. <laughs> now, if I hand it to her, I'm going to grab it back, right? Or I'm not going to let go. But if I toss it, it's out of my hands. I'll see you after church. <laughs> it's out of my hands. It's gone. That's what Peter was saying. Get rid of the anxiety. Throw those worries at God. Right? Cast. Forcefully get rid of those we tend, unfortunately, to just say, well, maybe God, no, right? To cast means take your anxieties, your fear, your worries, throw them away to God. And then don't even think about it because it's not yours, it's God's, right? We are hindered from living differently when our lives are burdened down with worry and fear and anxiety and Peter knows that. When the pressures of the world mount and cause worries, we are tempted to stop living differently and blend in, right? 
Oh, if I'm so worried about standing out, I'm just going to blend in. And in the end, this robs us of our joy. Because the joy is not in the circumstances. The joy isn't in, uh, the world doesn't notice me. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength in him, right? The joy of the Lord is not carrying our burdens. Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right? The Lord cares. You know what? What makes living kingdom lives difficult? It's not the demands of God. God says my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's the demands of the world. And so we need to live differently. Let God take care of the worries and the anxieties. And by the way, no backseat driving. Place it all on God's shoulders. He cares. Well, number three, be aware of God's enemy. Be aware of God's enemy. It says, be alert and sober-minded, right? Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kinds of suffering. Peter here addresses the source of every believer's conflict, and the church does not take it serious enough. There is an enemy who doesn't want you to live for Christ. He doesn't want you to live differently, and he the Bible says here in 1 Peter, prowls, seeking to devour you. Now, the good news is God is greater. God is in, on the throne. But we have to go God's way, right? But we need to recognize too many Christians don't take seriously that we have an active enemy. And in order to deal with our adversity, we must know how he operates. First of all, he's a roaring lion, right? He's a roaring lion. He seeks whom he will devour, right? We need to recognize that. The devil is full of schemes, right? And he's going to come after you. And he's going to try to discourage you. He's going to try to, he's going to lie to you. Say, it's not worth living that life. Oh, you're not very successful. He's a liar. Right? And Peter says, recognize that. Use, which is a whole other sermon, but use the weapons of God that we are given, right? Chief, most of all, is prayer. Right? And I tell you, I have, since I've been here, a year, a little, almost a year and a half now, I have never been more sick in my life. <laughs> and it's not because of Jim. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, I... I, at night, I kind of think, oh, boy, these people must think I am just this, you know, weird, weak kind of a person, right? Because I just pick up everything that comes along and even more, right? I've never been more sick in my entire life than the last year and a half. Why? Because the devil does not want this church to move forward. And he's at work trying to stop it, right? So thank you all for praying for me. It is very important. When so, I don't take it lightly when someone says, oh, pastor, I prayed for you this week. That's so important because we have an enemy 
who is seeking to devour, seeking to discourage, seeking to get at us, right? The greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world, right? We've got to grab onto that. And those of you who are asking about my latest thing, my, my teeth, it's, we're still working on it, and, <laughs> right? I don't even have to be awake to go to the dentist these days. I've been there so many times. It's just <laughs> the car just naturally goes there, right? And uh, Pastor Delgado asked this morning, he said, oh, are you ready to chew? I said, well, only on the word of God because I can't have steak. <laughs> right? In fact, it's a blessing that Lauren's here this morning because I may borrow some baby food at this moment, you know? <laughs> The devil fights. And what's the Bible tell us to do? Resist him. Stand firm. What do we do instead? I can't believe the devil's attacking me. I'll just go hide somewhere in a corner. No, no, no. Just resist him. Resist him. Stand firm. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he must flee. Stand firm. There are days we think we are the only ones under attack. We're not. In fact, that's why Peter here in 1 Peter chapter 5, that's why he says, because... Your fellow Christians all over are going through the same struggle. Right? How do we beat the devil? We beat him, right? By prayer, by arming ourselves with spiritual weapons. And Revelations chapter 12, verse 11. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death, right? Oh, we need to grab onto that, folks. They overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb. Jesus won the victory for us. By his wound, by his stripes, we are healed. And by the word of their testimony, we need to more Talk about what God is doing. Right? We need to talk more and more about what God is doing. I've, I told you just a moment ago, I've, over the past year and a half, I've, I've been more sick than I've ever been in my life, right? But I've also been the happiest I've ever been in my life. Why? Because being in the center of God's will, because seeing God working in your lives in this church, that's exciting. And we need to talk about it. We need to celebrate it. We need to give more testimonies about what God is doing. It strengthens us. It helps us. It helps us when the devil's attacking us. How? Well, because the devil comes to me and he says, forget it. You can't live that way. Forget it. You're sick. Oh, yeah, but devil. He healed. God healed Sally and Sarah and Jordan and whoever so he can heal me. Right? Or there's no answer to that, the devil will say. Oh, there is an answer because God gave an answer. Right? He gave an answer to Jim and he gave an answer to Sue and he gave an answer to Raquel, right? So he's going to give an answer to me. But you know what? If I don't know that God gave you an answer, that God is working in your life, I can't use that against the devil. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Keep praising God. Keep talking about what God is doing, right? It strengthens us. It helps us. Well, number four, receive God's provision. Receive God's provision. He says, and the God of grace will, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. 
fast. We need to receive the provisions of God. God has the answer for you. So stop going to the world for the answers. Stop trying to think, oh man, I got to figure this one out. Go to God. He has the provisions. Right? The Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Never. God has provisions for you. He does. And you know what? I've seen it over and over in Karen in my life, right? We've received money from places in the world we haven't been, right? From anonymous people who said, God told me you needed this. God provides. We need to go to God and trust him, right? And Seek him. Well, but, but I waited till 11.59 and I didn't see anything. No. Right? Trust him. He'll provide. The late Dr. Stan Toller wrote a book once. It said, God has never forsaken me, but he sure has scared me a few times. <laughs> Just trust him. Just trust him. He'll provide. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along the riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by the long months of drought. What's he saying there? When the enemy attacks, they don't panic. When the devil gets after you, don't worry, because your roots are planted in God, right? Their leaves stay green, and they never stop producing fruit. Are you a tree? Planted by the living water of God. And notice, Jeremiah here in 1 Peter, it doesn't say, folks, it doesn't say you won't have any problems. No, it doesn't say that. It says when I am planted in God, I cannot be moved. I will stay green and lush and produce fruit because God will provide. In this evil world that we are, by the way, temporary residents of, right? We can be strong and vibrant trees showing our world Jesus. Peter challenges us. Choose to live differently. Choose to live differently. You are kingdom citizens. Even above and beyond being citizens of the United States or citizens of Cape Verde, you are kingdom citizens. Live with the king at your center, right? And watch what God can do. Stand as we close this morning. Now receive the blessing from God from that passage I just read in Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. But be blessed, you who trust in the Lord, whose confidence is in God. May you be strong trees, and may God's water of life 
fill you and strengthen you as you live differently. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.